Today I'm going to be giving my Gloriosum a better pot as it's kind of already spilling over the edge and it's looking a little bit root bound. So I want to put it into something a little bit larger. Philodendrons like the Gloriosum, the uh, Plowmanii, as well as the Mame, they're all classified as creeping or crawling philodendrons. So they creep along the forest floor as opposed to climbing philodendrons, which uh, obviously climb up trees. So I want to find a, an appropriate sized or an appropriate pot that it can grow into and that I'm not having to repot it constantly. And that would be the case if I potted it up in something like this terracotta. Although it's a little bit of a larger pot, it won't take long before the stem kind of overgrows uh, or kind of spills over the edge of this pot as well. I did do a pretty drastic search on the World Wide Web trying to find a pot that was long enough where it would allow the uh, creeping philodendrons to grow without me having to repot it, say like every single year into something a little bit larger or having to propagate it. So this is what I found and I think it's absolutely perfect for these crawling or creeping philodendrons. Here is the brand and it is a self-watering planter. So the first thing that I absolutely love is obviously the length. There is so much room for it to grow in here, so I don't have to repot this every single year. I can let it do its thing, and when it comes time to uh, repotting it, then I can learn how to propagate this, and uh, yeah, just go from there. That way it keeps getting those larger massive leaves. Now, just because I have so much space in this pot, um, there is more than half, I actually do have two Gloriosums um, at this moment. I don't know which is which, but I do have the regular form as well as the dark form. And you can see this one is growing uh, this way. And then this one here is starting to grow this way. So I might actually put both plants in the same uh, planter here and they will just kind of grow, I don't know, past each other. And when it comes time to repotting them, I can separate them, I can split them up. So it'll just be a little bit of a fuller look instead of having one side of the planter uh, looking bare. So I think that's what I'm gonna do as they're both smaller plants. So I will be doing that here shortly. The second feature, which the instruction said is a self-watering planter. So it does have an insert. It has a reservoir, which you can uh, put water in here. It also has a, a little water gauge on top here that just uh, shows you the water levels that are in the planter. It does have an area here on the corner where you can uh, pour water into. So you don't actually have to take out the insert uh, to add water in the bottom. It's got a little drain on the side, which is uh, a great feature if you want the self-watering capability. I just mentioned the third thing, but I think it should be a standalone feature. I like that this is an insert. So I'm going to be watering my plants from the top down. I'm gonna let the water drain out the bottom of the container here, and then I'm simply just going to empty it out. But it also has a little drain plug on the bottom. So if you don't wanna take the insert out, like of the, uh, the actual container, you can just remove this little plug on the bottom and you can drain out the excess water that way. I think the last feature I'm gonna mention about this pot is the actual depth of the insert. It's actually quite deep. It will allow the roots to grow down into this uh, planter or the insert. Whereas if you used other self-watering pots, they're typically a little bit shallow just to accommodate for that self-watering feature, those little feet at the bottom. Uh, but this one, it is quite deep. So I'm really impressed with this. I think this is, like I said, an absolutely perfect pot for these uh, creeping or crawling philodendrons. So now I'm gonna take these out of the pot. I'm gonna show you what type of mix I'm gonna use. I'm gonna pot this up, give it a little bit of water, and uh, that'll be done for this little project. I'm just gonna start by mixing up my soil. I'm gonna be primarily using a premium orchid bark mix. It just allows for a really chunky mixture. You can see how gritty that is. I'm just gonna put this in the container. There's a little bit of soil in my little tarp thing here too. I'm just gonna mix that in. And I'm also gonna use a little bit of LECA. This is just for um, kind of aeration, just to make sure it's a, a nice chunky mixture. So something like this, something really chunky, something well draining, just like that. And then I'm gonna mix that, whoops, making a mess. And then I'm just gonna dump this into the insert. Oop, there's a wire in there. Before I put any soil in the bottom of the insert here, I'm just gonna take these guys out of their pots, just so I can see what kind of root system I'm dealing with. The reason why I'm doing this now as well is because this one's starting to get a new leaf. So I want it to come out undamaged. Come on, this thing's really in there. Okay, I'm just gonna, lightly untangle the roots. Oh, it's 
more root bound than I thought it was. I didn't see all these roots at the bottom. I'm just gonna lightly untangle these without tearing these larger roots. It's got a nice gritty soil mixture here as well. So I'm not gonna mess around too much. I just want these encircling roots to be straightened out. Whoops, whoa, this is falling over. I don't wanna snap the stem. Look at how floppy this is. Almost snapped it off. Okay, I'm gonna rest that one there. And then the other one, this one's in a much more dense soil than the other one but it's got some nice roots here as well. So I'm just gonna loosen this one up. This one's a little, well, it's definitely more stable than the other one. So this one's got some really nice roots. Let's set them aside. Now I'm just gonna dump in some of this aeroid mix just into the pot. I'm gonna do it about halfway up, just so it looks like that. And then I'm gonna size up the first cutting here. So I'm gonna do this one first uh, before I add the other cutting in. And you can see I've placed it more towards the back uh, corner. And obviously you want this portion of the stem to be closest to the edge, that way it can grow this way. And then when I put the other one in, I'm gonna have it uh, closer to this edge so they'll kind of uh, crisscross, kind of parallel to each other. So now I'm just gonna add some soil in kind of around the back and just underneath it. There's a little bit of a gap here as well which I'm going to add some soil in. Just trying to hold up this cutting. So just like that. You can always add in more afterwards, but like I said, I primarily want the cutting supported um, right underneath kind of those aerial roots. I did mix in some of the existing soil in with the orchid mix as well as the LECA. So something like that, maybe one more little scoop just underneath, and then I'll add in the other cutting. So just kind of build that up just like that so it's very stable, it's supported, and it's not underneath the soil. And now when I pot this one up, I'll be placing it up against this side, and then adding in all the soil kind of underneath it. If I could see what I'm doing here, I might have to mix up a little bit more soil but so far I'm really happy with how this is turning out. The mixture will be a really well draining soil, just allowing that water to, to just kind of drain right through and that way, whoop, this guy's stuck on there. I don't want these guys sitting in like really soggy soil. So when I do water it, I'm gonna give it a good throw soaking. So it comes out the bottom of the drain hole, but I don't want this soil to remain kind of wet and soggy so that it uh, starts to develop some root rot. Just kind of lightly packing this down, just again, so the uh, stem rests just on top of the soil line. I think that's pretty much it. I think this is a perfect amount of soil. So the last thing I have to do is give it some water, but I'm also gonna spray off the leaves. So I just uh, place the container in my little plant shower and I'm just gonna spray off all the leaves. They're looking a little bit dirty from the repotting. And then I'm just gonna soak the soil here. This will help settle it as well. And I'm gonna water it all until it comes out the bottom of the insert. This little plant shower thing has been an absolute lifesaver for me. Now I don't have to take my uh, plants all the way to the bathroom, to the shower to spray them off. I can take this wherever it is I go. Maybe give it a little bit more water. It's definitely much heavier, so I know it's, it's thoroughly watered. And most of the roots were kind of at the um, top to midway mark of the pot. So they haven't gone all the way down, but I'm just gonna water it thoroughly like that. Here is the finished product and I could not be happier with how it looks. I like the color contrast between the green and the white. It's in a nice chunky mix. Um, yeah, I'm really happy. And obviously you can take out the insert if you need. Um, I do have these on my Canada and US Amazon page. I do make a commission off of the sales. I don't actually sell them. So if you wanna pick up this planter, go check out my Amazon page. I'll leave the links to those uh, pages down in the description of this video. I don't think you can go wrong. This I think was like $30 in Canada and I think I saw on the US site it was like $21. So such a good value in my opinion. Um, obviously I'll provide some updates down the road. But if you have any comments or questions, please leave it down below in the comment section. If you want to watch another houseplant video, click this one right here. Otherwise, thanks again for watching. Take care, bye.